I can stop beatboxing. And we are back live from Los Angeles, California. Oh, no, wait. No, we are in, we are in Leipzig, Germany. Uh, that's why I feel so tired because of the jet lag. Um, you're going to get tired of that joke before this day is over. My goodness. But we have more content. We have got Drew here from Oshawa. How does it feel to be here, Drew? Very exciting. Just got here like... That's really nice. Thank you so much. No, I'm going to let you finish, but no, okay. So, so we are going to pass this off to him. He's going to tell us about Oshawa, which is the open source hardware. That's it. That's just open source hardware. The A is silent. It doesn't stand for anything. Uh, so, Drew, take us away. Hi, my name is uh, Drew Festini. Uh, I want to talk about open source hardware and the Open Source Hardware Association. Matthias is also part of the association, uh, so I wanted to represent that here. Um, I have um, some links in the slides, so this is the URL if you want to pull them off of GitHub. Um, I messed up uploading them to the submission website, so I'll redo that once I'm done. Uh, so I'm a, I design open source hardware projects for a um, circuit board manufacturing service called Oshpark. Um, also part of uh, the BeagleBoard.org Foundation, we make open source hardware Linux computers, and then I'm uh, part of the board of directors for the Open Source Hardware Association, which is uh, what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so probably most people at um, this event have heard of open source. So examples of popular open source, Android, Linux, LibreOffice, Firefox, Apache. Um, and the term open source refers to something that people can modify and share because its design is publicly accessible. Um, and open source, hardware or, uh, open source software allows you to inspect, modify, and enhance that software. Um, there's also the term free software, which comes from a more philosophical perspective, which is about these four freedoms. So the, when it comes to hardware, I'm going to refer to um, open source hardware as a term to be inclusive of um, free, libre, and open source um, hardware. Um, some people use different terms, um, but I'm just going to use the term open source hardware here to refer to that. Um, so the statement of principle for open source hardware, as we define it, is uh, hardware whose design is made publicly available so that anyone can study, modify, distribute, make and sell the design or hardware based on that design. So for electronics, which is mostly what I work on, that would be um, sharing the design files for your electronics, um, this, which would include the schematic, the board layout, um, the bill of materials. Um, and we're not just talking about an output file like a PDF or a PNG. We're talking about the editable source files. So if you're using KiCad, the KiCad files or the Eagle files. Um, and then in terms of the bill of materials, um, one thing that's good to keep in mind is making sure all the components in your project are available in low quantity. Um, so what's an example of open source hardware that many people have probably heard of? Um, Arduino. Uh, how many people have heard of Arduino before here? Okay, so a good chunk of you. Um, so Arduino was a board that was designed at a small school in Italy, and probably most people will never heard of it if, unless they released it as an open source hardware project. Um, and it achieved critical mass because they shared the hardware and they shared the source code, um, and it was good enough to do a lot of projects at the time. Um, there's a cool documentary um, that you can check out if you search for it on YouTube or Vimeo um, from back in the day when Arduino started. Um, so we're talking about open source hardware. So how do we know that the Arduino is open source hardware? Well, we can go to the Arduino website and we can do download the Eagle um, design files for it, um, which has the schematic and the board layout. Um, so when we publish the design files for our open source hardware project, um, we need to use an open source license. Um, so there's several different options here. Um, there's the Creative Commons share like, um, such as like the well, Creative Commons is a suite of licenses, um, some of which are open source licenses. So the Creative Commons BYSA means attribution and then share alike. Um, one thing to keep in mind here is there is a non-commercial attribute. Um, and if you use the non-commercial attribute that makes it not open source, um, there's a good blog post on that link there. If you download the slides, it goes into why this is the case. Um, you can also use copyleft or uh, reciprocal licenses like GPL v2 or v3. Um, you can also use um, permissive licenses like Apache, BSD, MIT. Um, there's also licenses that were created specifically for open source hardware. Um, CERN has created something called the Open Hardware License. 
which I want to talk about here. So um, CERN started off with something called the Open Hardware Repository, where they were sharing a lot of the hardware that they were designing for the um, physics experiments that they were building. Um, and then they created a license to go along with that. Uh, there's a great interview with uh, Javier Sereno, um, who leads this um, hardware team at CERN. Um, and they helped create this open hardware repository um, and the open hardware license. So this can kind of get complicated, all these different licenses. There's also trademarks and, co and copyrights. Um, from the Open Hardware Summit back in 2014, Ari Douglas gave a really good overview of the different licenses and what might work for your project and what might not work for your project. So I recommend checking that out. Um, but what is the point of all this? So the point of open source hardware is you want to enable collaborative development. So the reason why you would publish these files is you want other people to contribute to the hardware design of your project. Um, and if you're just doing it to kind of check a box, uh, you know, or add a keyword to your crowdfunding campaign, it's probably not the right thing for you. Um, the point of all this, the reason why you publish your files, is you want other people to participate in the development. Um, so I'm part of the board of directors for the Open Source Hardware Association. Matthias is also on the current board. Um, we're a 501c3, which is a, means it's a federal nonprofit um, uh, organization in the U.S. Um, and uh, the website, uh, one of the main things it does is it hosts the definition of um, what open source hardware is. Uh, we also have some things like best practices, um, quick reference guide, um, things that you may do for an open source hardware project and things that you must do. Um, and then also a checklist if you want to check to see if your um, project is uh, open source hardware. Uh, and Ashwa came out of this event called the Open Hardware Summit, which started in 2010. And we're going to have the 10th one coming up in March in New York City on March 13th, so um, hopefully we'll see some of you there. And back in October, we had an event called Open Hardware Month, um, which Matthias uh, helped out a lot with. Um, so we had um, people all over the world um, do locally organized meetups and talks and workshops um, about open hardware. Um, kicked off with some events in uh, Vienna, in Colorado, um, and then we had 40 events in 14 different countries across five continents back in October. So we'll be planning to do Open Hardware Month again in October of 2020, so hopefully we can get more people involved next time. Um, if you're curious about what happens at the Open Hardware Summit, all the videos are online from our previous one, which was in 2018. Um, we skipped this year to do the Open Hardware Month, and then we'll be having it in 2020. Um, so one of the things that uh, the Open Source Hardware Association, or OSHWA, did was we created this certification program for open hardware. So um, some of you have probably seen this gear logo there, which is uh, kind of an unofficial logo. It was created uh, by a member of the community. Um, it's a great logo. I really like it a lot. Um, but we wanted to create something that had a legal meaning behind it. Um, so cre we created this um, open source hardware certified logo. Um, so it's a self-certification program. So you can go to our website. You can go to oshawa.org. And you can go on there and you can register your project as being open source hardware. Um, you'd go in there and you fill out the form, you put in things like where your documentation is, what license you're using, description of what your project is, um, and kind of has a couple different uses. One is if you're a consumer or someone that's looking for a device, it makes it really easy to identify if that device is open source hardware because it'll have this logo on there. And if you're making a project and you want people to be able to easily identify um, that it is open source hard hardware and then also where the um, design files are, um, if you see this logo, you can go to, to certificate.ashwa.org and you can look up that number. So it'll be the two-letter country code and then whatever the sequence was when it was registered and you can look that up um, and uh, find the, like the design files and the documentation. Uh, so if you're interested to find out more, we have a, um, you can join Oshawa as a member. Um, if you're part of a company, you can also join um, as a corporate member of Oshawa. Um, we have a mailing list, um, which you, I recommend getting on. Um, we also have a forum website as well. Um, and then you can follow us on Twitter. Um, for the Open Harbor Summit, there's OH Summit. Um, and uh, the executive director of the association is Alicia Gibb. And she wrote a book a few years ago called Building Open Source Hardware that has essay, essays from several different people in the community um, about their experience with doing open hardware projects. And we're almost out of time here. Um, do I take questions? Yeah, OK. Um, I have some bonus slides about Linux, but let's take some questions first. If anyone has any questions, if not, I'll talk about Linux. OK. 
Uh, it doesn't look like we have any questions. So um, my two favorite things are open source hardware and Linux. So I thought I would throw in a few projects. Because we're talking about open hardware, we should actually talk about some hardware, right? So um, one of my favorite projects is called the Novena Laptop, um, which was actually created by Bunny, um, who gave a keynote this morning, which was really awesome, and Sean Cross, who goes by Zob. So they wanted to create a laptop that was 100% open source. Um, so this was probably, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, which at the time they found, they basically built the most open system they could. And they shared the design files for the board and the schematic and everything. Um, it had pretty decent um, performance at the time. Um, in this cluster somewhere, I believe, is the Reform laptop, which I recommend you checking out. Um, Lucas over there has a kind of the follow-up to this. Um, Bunny's off doing other things now, but Lucas is doing a really cool open hardware laptop called the Reform. Um, I mentioned BeagleBoard before. Um, we make uh, open hardware computer, oh, single, small, single board computers that are all open hardware. Um, and one of the things to note is because we're open hardware, there's a bunch of different manufacturers, um, and there's BeagleBones with many different features and price points, which is kind of nice because if uh, someone says, oh, I'll take off the HDMI and put something else on there, um, you can do that. Uh, one of the other things I'd like to mention, especially because we're in Europe, one of the, a really great open source hardware company is Alimex, and they have a line of boards called the O Linux Vino, which is a, um, a great a line of boards that are capable of running Linux, and they're all 100% open source. Um, and in fact, they are actually now designed with KiCad, which is an open source free software circuit board design software. Um, so this board here, the uh, a64 O Linux we know came out a few years ago, and they designed it completely in KiCad. Um, and Svetin actually gave a talk at uh, Fosdem about the process of doing that. Um, and I'll end on if you've not heard of it before. I'm a big fan of KiCad. It's a free software open source program for designing circuit boards. Um, and uh, actually, if, you, if you're interested, um, there's going to be an event called KeyCon happening at CERN uh, coming up this year. So um, look for that. Um, Alimex also did a laptop that puts that A64 board into, the, um, into a laptop form factor. Um, I have a few more minutes, I think, or I don't know. Anyone have any questions? Uh, how far we are from uh, having a, a phone uh, which is open source hardware? Yeah, that's a uh, very good question. Um, I think uh, there's a few people that made attempts at that. Um, you know, uh, Librem has a uh, phone that's coming out. Um, the dev kit they did develop for that was open source hardware. Um, but I don't think the actual phone is, um, though I could be wrong about that. But I think it would be great to see more progress in that area. I think consumer electronics are really hard because um, the, the development cycle is so quick um, that it, it almost doesn't uh, benefit necessarily to, to collaborate with other people on something that's only going to be existing for six months. But, um, you know, Bunny talks about how, like, Moore's Law is slowing down. And that was kind of the idea with the Novena was that, like, we can actually produce something that people will use maybe three, four, or five years from now. And in that case, um, collaborating around a common design, I think, makes a lot of sense. So, But I would definitely love to have an open hardware phone. So. Um, if anyone is interested in that, um, I would love to uh, maybe talk about possibilities with that. Yeah. Cool. All right, thank you.